Good evening and welcome to Strange Love Live After Hours. I'm your host, Kemi Chaos. Welcome, babies. That was our new intro by John Nastos and Clay uh, Guyverson. I still like it. It's still new. Uh, welcome to After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. And as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. Nice Hi. job there in the intro. Thank you. Yeah. I think that was sarcastic. No, it wasn't sarcastic. It was actually, I, I was, yeah, I, I kind of didn't turn your mic on quite yet. Your mouth. <laughs> so why words, are you so. mocking me? <laughs> I'm, I'm not mocking you. Wow. You're really hostile tonight. <laughs> Holy moly. I think you're just a little sensitive, dear. No, I'm just really busy. <laughs> busy makes for a sensitive man. It's okay, though. We have a guest. Can I introduce her? Yes, please. Yeah, really? Are you ready? Mm hmm. We're joined by Liz Grover. Hey. Hello, Liz. Welcome back. Thank you. Tonight's kind of a special night. There are four of us here in the room. It's a very small, small studio audience. Uh, there's me. There's Dr. Normal. There's Liz Grover. There's Sam Grover. There's no one else here because everyone else is either watching Battlestar Galactica at the Baghdad or they're in Austin for South by Southwest. We are not at South by Southwest. Anyone here at South by Southwest? I, I, I queued the graphic, by the way. So the graphics. Excellent. Are, yes. Is it up? Do we yes. have a little it, yellow house? Yes. We have a yellow house. Strange. Where am I? Which camera am I talking to? Uh, you are talking to camera one. I can. I can. I, can... I need camera two for Okay, a camera two. <laughs> we are not at South by Southwest. We are at home in Portland. Portland, Oregon, not Austin, Texas. Not at South by Southwest. And we are having a good time, damn it. Everybody has a good time, right? Well, Yay. we have a little yellow house. We have a, yes, we have a tiny, oh, wait a minute. We do have a little yellow house. I still want to know if I can sell the yellow house the railroad and the electric company and put a hotel hmm. in Park Place. And no one's answered that yet. If you're talking about your little yellow house on Twitter, yes. But if you're talking about the little yellow house that we own, no, you may not. Uh oh, someone just hashtag bitter. <laughs> yeah. He is a little bitter, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Babies. Bitter. Bitter, Dr. Normal. So did anyone here actually really want to go to South by Southwest? Have you been to South by Southwest? I mean, I heard about the music festival and wanted to yeah. go that and then everybody in town said they wanted to go and a lot went they're and, all at the interactive conference right now yeah. that's what's happening currently yeah i wanted to go yeah well you know but you know march is the killer for us so yeah every time i've ever been to austin it's been on business and i just sort of blow through austin and i'm in a round rock or somewhere and then i'm back to the airport and i'm gone but from what i hear south by southwest is like fun business the airport's nice yeah. They have a really good Austin City Limits store there. I don't mm -hmm. know. I've never been there. I just get presents from it. Hmm. Yeah. I got a great CD there. Yeah? What was well, it? I, it, was a, it was a blues compilation CD. Nice. From the Austin City Limits concert archives. I also have great Austin City Limits t-shirts. Dr. Normal does all of his business trip shopping at the airport. <laughs> yeah? I think our daughter has a nice Austin City Limits teddy bear. <laughs> yeah, it's like wow. most people. I mean, that's what bears. you do. Yeah, it's good times. I also have this lovely hat from Austin, from his last business trip to Austin. It seemed appropriate today. It doesn't fit with mm. my headphones. Yeah, was I in Austin? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, oh, did you not get this in Austin? Oh, no, Dallas. this was your other was trip. Dallas. This is, I'm sorry, I lied. It was from Texas, though. Dallas is the other Austin. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Portland is the other Austin. Yeah. Without the big conference uh, centers. <laughs> yeah. It's all the same. It's all in Texas. Dallas is just like Austin. Trust me, I know. Um, yeah. <laughs> You're wrong. That's okay. That's. Yeah. I know. I know. I, yeah, yeah. No one pay attention to Dr. Normal. He doesn't know what he's talking about right now. I'm just staring at this beautiful little yellow house graphic that uh, I put together, like you put together before. So if show. you are not at South by Southwest, you should follow not at South by Southwest at Twitter because they have some great not at South by Southwest um, happenings. I know that they had a food cart happening downtown for people who are not at South by Southwest. There was some event about not being at South by Southwest that happened at the Green Dragon. I'm wondering if that was beer and blog with just the smallest amount of people ever, but I'm not positive. 
So if you're not at South by Southwest, have fun not being at South by Southwest. I wonder Where if anyone's them? actually watching us. Probably not. They're probably too busy. They're probably too busy being at South by Southwest or, mm -hmm. or at the Baghdad because the... the yeah, like, whatever. The blonde woman. Yeah, can't yeah. remember her name. I refrain from calling Science her a chick. That opera. was very proper of me. Right. Yeah. Okay. There we so, go. are we done with the not at South by Southwest? Uh, yes, we can be. Oh. <laughs> That we're going to come back to it. We, we'll come back to it later. Okay. But, you know, we, we do have other things to do with our time, aside from not being at South by Southwest. And that's, there were some things that we didn't get to delve into with Liz during the tech edition. There were some photos left unviewed, some videos left unplayed. And we have a video for you all very soon that has an interesting tech-linked anecdote that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. So should we see the video first? Or, or do we they... can. Let's see the video, and then we'll have the anecdote. It's, it's very short, though. Yes. Just FYI, mm -hmm. so. Oh, here's the woman who gave uh, you this, yes? Yes. Liz. What's her name? Liz. Oh, Liz. That's Liz. She's pretty. She's pretty. Look. see. Yeah, pretty girl. From United States. Yes. She was studying here. So there's the video you sent us. <laughs> yeah, so there's a whole story about that. And so tell us about the video first. Who's in it? There are two people there. Um, there is uh, Kali Baba who is my uh, meditation guru mm -hmm. in Nepal. This mm -hmm. was filmed in Nepal, in the Himalayas, on a mountaintop. Um, and then there's the guy shooting the video. Um, his name is Michael Yan. Mm -hmm. And I uh, didn't know him at the time, but uh, he does a lot of independent journalism about the war in Iraq. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we... Um credited uh, his website there in the video and he's got a lot of uh, material on the war in Iraq and yeah. now is he a former military guy yeah. it seemed like mm -hmm. so um, I, I didn't get a chance to look too closely at the website so so how did that come about do you found that video on the website or the video found me and this is the interesting part about the story um, so I'll start by saying that Kali Baba first help me to understand a little more deeper about the internet and it's funny because Kali Baba is the shaman who's been doing yoga on a Himalayan hilltop for you know now before we go anywhere what's his Twitter handle <laughs> <laughs> um, we need to use Kali Baba Twitter handle. he's one. giving you internet <laughs> advice <laughs> well can I um, friend him on Facebook <laughs> I've thought about starting that for him. Um, he asked know. me. He asked me to do a website for him. So sooner or later, I'll do that. But um, <laughs> he, you have to understand, he lives in a mud hut mm -hmm. on top of a hill. He has no running water. People. So he has Y Max, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People have to go down a hill with like this copper jug, fill it up with water, and bring it up the hill. And there's one hanging light bulb in his house, but of course the electricity doesn't come all the time. It's mostly fire. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, there's not a refrigerator and there's no flat screen TV. But for some... no flat screen TV, <laughs> he's been gypped. And you say he's happy and not angry, right? I don't know how he's happy. He's at peace with that, because you know. Yeah, I'm better. I want my room service. Uh, Are you trying to do the Johnny Mnemonic yeah, yeah, thing? Okay. We gotta take yeah, this guy to That Best didn't Buy. go well. <laughs> that didn't go well for yeah, you, Doctor Normal. Exactly. You need a pile of garbage, and you need to yell about uh, prostitutes and pressed shirts. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. So one day when I was in Nepal in my studies with him and hanging out with villagers and having a really good time, eating a lot of curry, um, mm. I uh, was walking up the hill. There's not a road that goes to this place, and. I have a house there now, and it's another mud house. Mm -hmm. um, so I was walking up to my place, and usually Kali Baba is either sitting inside his house or he's sitting under the tree, mm -hmm. and there's not much else. Mm -hmm. He just sits all day in mm -hmm. one place, and he's happy. Um, so, you know, 
his house is kind of like up on this plateau and I was just like walking up and he was over here I'm like what are you doing <laughs> he wasn't in the house or under the tree yeah I'm like you're up from from your seat and and he said to me in two words he said Shiva internet <laughs> he said what Shiva internet no Shiva if you... Shiva internet Shiva internet okay <laughs> Shiva is one of the mm -hmm. main gods in Hinduism mm -hmm. and he likes to destroy and she was all about fire He's kind of the hippie of the Hindu gods, actually. Mm -hmm. um, got long He's hair. He's kind of an angry hippie, though. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> they, they get angry sometimes, believe it or not. <laughs> so anyway, um, so he said Shiva Internet, and I'm like, whoa. I just got so much out of that. And I really um, understood that the Internet is just um, a reflection and a tool of our collective consciousness. Like, we're all connected all the time, and we don't need the internet to be connected, but people don't realize that they have it. Now, I was in Nepal, in this place that had no Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. um, so he was used to the Shiva internet. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the, rep the internet is a replication of that. Um, so it was really cool that he said that, and he's someone who's never been on a computer, but he gets it, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so anyway... Fast forward, I'm in Afghanistan. I'm really missing my Himalayan hideaway and the mountain views and all the really sweet people. And um, I said to my friends and to myself, I'm like, damn, like, I wish I could be back there right now. Like, I just, I want something, some kind of sign. And um, within a couple of days, um, this French woman came to my house and I had uh, this place where I do my yoga and like, pictures of uh, interesting Buddhists and Hindus, like the Dalai Lama, and um, this woman saw these pictures, and she said, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I meditate, and I do yoga, and like, there's this like guru I have in Nepal, blah, blah, blah. She's like, huh, that's interesting. Um, I actually do meditation myself, and she said, um, you know, I study with someone in northern India, um, but... Um, I know this man in America who's a writer named Mike Yan, and he's uh, writing stories about the type of shaman that you're sitting with or that you sat with, and that that's called a sadhu, and that's like the, the shaman of Hinduism. Um, so he's writing this uh, book, and he's doing a documentary about sadhus. Maybe I could connect the two of you, um, and you could talk about it. He's in America, but I'll do it through email. So he... Uh, she, uh, the French woman, she emailed both of us. She emailed me in Afghanistan and this writer, you know, filmmaker guy in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And, you know, said like, oh, you guys should talk about these shamans, blah, blah, blah. So I get an email the next day from this guy and he said, oh, tell me your story. Like, who did you sit with? Because I've sat a lot with a lot of these guys in India and Nepal. So I said, you know, da, 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 sat with this guy, Kali Baba out of the way in Nepal. I don't know if you ran into him, but it was pretty hard to run into him. Um, so uh, he sent me an email back and he said, I want to call you in Kabul and mm -hmm. we can talk about it more. So within about 12 hours, um, he called me in Kabul. He called me from Connecticut mm -hmm. <laughs> and he said, you know, tell me more about your story. And I told him about, you know, Kali Baba and the villagers there and what it was like to be there. And um, he said, you know, that sounds really familiar. Um, let me go um, check my film footage. You know, like he said again, you know, I, I've sat with hundreds of sadhus. Um, so I'm not sure if I've sat with them, but I'll go look. Mm -hmm. So I go to bed. I wake up. <laughs> and what do I see? An email from this man, Michael Yan, And I see that video that you just played uh, in my email. <laughs> So, uh, you know, it's like, I just find it interesting that, uh, you know, I, I woke up one day in Kabul and said, gosh darn, I miss Nepal, I want to be there, I, I want to sign, Yeah. you know, and, and this video shows up within days, <laughs> and through the internet, it's like, oh wow, uh, mysticism can happen online too. <laughs> when was the last time you were in Nepal? Uh, we were in Nepal back in December. In December? Mm -hmm. And you still want to go back? Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, it's my second home. Um, you know, I said I have a house there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a slice of heaven. 
<laughs> so what do you do when you're not writing your book? When you're not doing something on the internet? When you're not longing to go back to Nepal? When you're not getting married? <laughs> twice? Um, <laughs> sometimes I go to beer and blog. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I go to Ignite. Um, yoga. I am addicted to the office. Oh, and yeah. 30 Rock. It's a really heavy addiction. And, um, I mean, yeah, I'm kind of boring other than that. <laughs> like, I really don't do much. Like, when I'm not doing stuff, I really like to just chill. Dr. Normal and I are watching uh, 30 Rock the other night. Dr. Normal does not watch TV. We don't have cable. We, we watch it on Hulu. Yeah. And we're watching 30 Rock the other night, and he's watching the list of producers at the beginning of the show. And at the very beginning of the episode, he says, I don't think I can watch this week's episode. 30 Rock now has too many producers. He said, it's going to be a bad episode. I remember like, and I didn't used to watch this show a whole lot, but I'd catch it once in a while. I remember that comedy, Frasier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it got really popular, what happens in TV when it gets really popular, watch the role at the beginning. There's like 20 producers on the show and you're just like i'm out and you know what i mean this, this tells you that this thing has gone just totally like you know jump the shark it's off you love the jump the shark yeah. phase. no That's i mean it's just thing. like it's it's done actually we'll, we'll be adding our our producer role uh, at the beginning of <laughs> next week's episode so you'll know that strange of live is this is the last kaput <laughs> yeah but we need to uh, get some producers really quickly if you'd like to be a producer strange of live. oh no please please <laughs> Um, pick a pick up a camera and use some gear. Did you put the hat on, by the way? Did you get to the hat? Didn't I put the hat mm -hmm. on? Oh, did. you did. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I was busy switching things. I put the hat on. Yeah. It didn't fit with my headphones. So, um, I wonder what our Austin people are doing. I, I wish don't know. We, I wish we had somebody we could be like. And I don't care. And now, <laughs> and now to uh, this cat live in Austin. Yeah, no, they're too, they're busy getting drunk. So that's that's what they do over there. Are you drunk, this cat? <clears throat> Poor Catherine. <laughs> so I'd like to know more about. Um, so the the so what the internet access? I mean, you're you're in the middle of nowhere, and it's just like really. That's what you're gonna obsess over? Yeah, I okay. mean, of course, because if I were there, that's what I'd be obsessing over. I, I mean, would be like, put your phone away. You have no Twitter here. Get over it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd be like, do you guys get three G? Um, you know, I mean, what, I mean, what are the options? Do you have to go to some place oh or like God. a, I mean, <laughs> is there a coffee shop? So, is there like a Starbucks? <laughs> Kabul Starbucks. Is there a mud hut where you can get internet exactly. access? It's, it's a coffee <laughs> shop. Well. It's called the really ugly mug or something. I don't know. I, I'm just guessing here. It's a war-torn mug. Exactly. The war-torn mug. Oh yes. God, this is terrible. <laughs> Um, well, oh my God. so I said, yeah, um, in Kabul, they have a number of internet cafes, <laughs> <Normal>. <laughs> um, where I worked, of course, you know, the internet cafes they have there are not high speed. So, right. um, when I worked on elections with the UN, mm -hmm. um, we had to have a huge satellite dish, right. uh, next to our office. So that's, that's how we got high speed. So you just kind of hooked up to the satellite dish and it's like, hey. Yeah. Wow. Really? Huge. Yeah. Like um, maybe 50 feet wide. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow. So. And then other than Do that. Do you have you're... satellite di dish envy? No. 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 Yeah. Too much latency. Okay. But anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> look, it's true. What oh, Dr. Nerd. What? <laughs> this is a tech show, right? No. Okay. No, we had a tech show earlier. Okay. Yeah. And? I'm, so, I'm sorry. I was having hair issues. Yeah, and? My, with my headphones. And I want to know if we can show that picture that I like. Oh, you want to show another picture? That you're not terribly fond of, but. No, I I, I just, we, we didn't rehearse this, and so, you know. We never rehearsed the show. This is true. Um, I'm getting it. We could, you know, I could have drink music, but then you'd have to push the drink music I button. I could. So. I could bring up drink music here. I can't hum the drink music. Um, where's the... 
(laughs) (laughs) Everything depends on you, babe. Um, No, it actually doesn't. So um, I am not finding the photo. So when's the last time you went to Beer and Blog? Um, Last week. Last week? Yeah. What was last week? Was there anything special? What was... No, it was just that. I was there last week. I yeah. didn't see you. I was there doing the four to five shift. Oh, I, I think we got there at 530. Yeah. Yeah. See? I was thinking and thinking and thinking. I was like, God, last week. Sounds so familiar. Do you have a photo, Dr. Kim? Yes, I do. Okay, why don't you show us the, the photo and sure. Liz can tell us about it. And there's the photo. That's it's the... Yeah, it's the one I mentioned earlier. Okay. Yeah, so we've got women say pull out. And um, it's not sexual. Um, Even it's, though it's got the curvy woman lines. Yeah, you know, it's it's um, women wanting the, the troops to come home and the war in Iraq to end. Um, that was from a peace march. Um, and that's Code Pink, a women's group um, for peace. Mm-hmm. And that was in Washington, D.C., uh, 2007 for a peace march. Um, that oh, about half a million people showed up to, and um, half a million people wanting peace. Surely not. That seems silly. Yeah, <laughs> crazy guys. <laughs> um, yeah. So there was like this whole war in some place over there, and like all these people like showed up because they wanted it to end. And um, we had these fun banners, um, we being Code Pink. I used to um, work with them as an activist. And um, it was a really fun time because we got to make banners like this and have fun. Because if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? Even when it's peace activism, it should be really fun. So. so I want to go back to something you said earlier. When you came to Portland, you're looking for a community. Mm-hmm. I'm paraphrasing completely. You didn't actually say any of these words. Um, <laughs> I'll go along with it. It's okay. <laughs> no. Um, but you said you found Ignite. Mm-hmm. And so how really did you find the Portland Tech community? Was it through, like, just Googling stuff? How did you find the Portland Tech community and Twitter? Um, well, Sam told me about Beer and Blog. And um, before um, the two of us ever went... Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was just, you know, I got back from traveling and I needed to chill and, you know, I had Sam and I wanted to get to know him more, Mm -hmm. you know, um, because we got together before a big trip of mine and then I left and and came back. Um, So I I didn't feel very social and I was like, well, what do I do next in my life? Um, So then I was ready to be social and, and Sam said, you know, there are these tech groups around and beer and blog so okay let's go check out the beer and blog thing and I think it was just about a year ago that we went to beer and blog I'd say about a year and three weeks it was the the beginning then because they recently celebrated their one year birthday anniversary yeah whatever it is for an event yeah yeah it was very early like I saw um uh, Justin Kistner who was who was he on Twitter at the time? Med Medafluence. Meta yeah. Yeah. And Inverso and um, Adam Duvander and Yeah, not big. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, we went and it was just seven people and we we're having a really hard time getting a connection. Mm-hmm. We we're at the Lucky Lab and uh, went that time and um, it took some time, but then we started going back. Mm-hmm. And you know that's that's pretty much it, and it's been a, a really wonderful to watch it blossom and mm-hmm. turn into what it is now. So. Yeah. So you used to blog, mm-hmm. and not so much lately because of the book writing. Mm. Yeah. What was your inspiration when you started blogging? Um, I started blogging in Afghanistan, and um, this inspiration of mine was also the inspiration that sent me there one of them but Mm -hmm. it was that all this stuff was happening and I wasn't mainstream media and I could say whatever I wanted to and I was kind of on this insider perspective Mm -hmm. doing humanitarian aid so that's why I started blogging and also like my friends at home were really worried (laughs) so I thought if I blog regularly maybe it'll make them feel a little bit better yeah were there um did you have certain problems just blogging, uh, doing what you're doing? Or, you know, did you get people say, hey, stop 
writing about this or um you know i just blogged on my own with afghanistan i didn't tell anybody in afghanistan that i was blogging because i always feel weird when i'm blogging about a place and people are there because i have my perspective and they have theirs and maybe they don't cross or something but um the people at home were cool with it um i never had anything more than just friends and family following the blog and everybody was like oh this is really interesting you know this is totally a different perspective um i did have one problem blogging <laughs> and it, it it actually had to do with china um i found out my blog was banned in china <laughs> so so that was the only only problem i had you and many more i think <laughs> right oh i'm sure yeah yeah, yeah. so it, it's um so it was more that uh, the people there were were not aware of uh, what was going on and um you know more like you know you're, you're blogging for back here so it's like kind of you know it, so if if you're in a situation and and the people are aware of your blogging and can read about what you're writing about them then it's kind of a different situation right it's case. it's kind of like um a personal thing mm -hmm. and when i was living in Kabul i you know, spent most of my time working with the UN, which is like living in a fishbowl because you live with the people who you work with. You're not allowed to live with people who don't work for the UN because of security measures. Um, so, you know, I wake up and I see my colleagues in my living room mm -hmm. in the morning and mm -hmm. then I go see them at the office and it's like, you just want something that's your own. So like they... kind of like a dorm situation? <laughs> um, I was in a dorm situation for a little bit. Oops. And oh. uh, <laughs> that was my impression of the bombs. Um, so anyway, and yeah. now you know what it's like, damn it. <laughs> Feel my pain. No, but um, we had a dorm situation. I did that for about a month and I couldn't handle it because I lived with one woman who was really cool, but we lived in a room that was the like size of that carpet over there, the alphabet rug. Um, you guys can't see, but it's a very small rug. It's tiny. Yeah. That's the remote camera cue, right? Or Big something. 12, yeah. five, That's our five. daughter's old rug. It's itty bitty. So anyway, yeah, we, we um, lived in a dorm and it was kind of cool though because we had a bunker down below. So if anything really went down, the bunker was right there and there nice. was a bar in the bunker. So <laughs> we had the bunker bar. If I ever have a bunker, I want a bar in it, please. Oh yeah. And we had karaoke. You had a karaoke bar in your bunker? Yeah. Did that, you did you guys well, just hang out in the bunker all the time? Um, yeah. Pretty yeah. Much. I mean, did if you, you have internet a lot of time access and you got to go to the bunker. No. It's oh, better be okay. nice. Okay. No internet access, but they did have karaoke and a bar. But cell phone access, so you well, could technically still tweet. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Really? Now, Dr. Normal is in. He's ready to really? go down to the bunker. He doesn't care. Wow. So you could, <laughs> you could actually go down. So it was kind of elaborate or you kind of oh, yeah. Was it large? Yeah. yeah, but this was this was the only bunker that was like this. There was yeah. this was like, if MTV did like fat bunkers, <laughs> this would be on that show. I love it. Is yes. that, they have a show called Fat Something. It's like Fat Pads, I think. Yeah. 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 One it's of those like things. I don't watch MTV. That, that was... I used to watch Down MTV the back when they had music oh. videos. Does anyone remember when MTV had music videos and that's what they did? Like, uh, yes. seven, eight, yeah. Yeah. That was I when Quarter Flash videos. was on the video. Who's then, Quarter Flash? You know, and this, Pat Benatar. This bunker, though, I have to say, like, this was an incredibly um, splendid bunker. And it was not at my office, though. So, like, the UN had this kind of main hub mm -hmm. in Kabul that was the main hub for the country. And mm -hmm. this thing looked like it could have an airport inside. It was... Cement, huge walls, barbed wire, like... Did you have a bowling alley? Uh, no, we didn't. No. But this was before the Wii was... Yeah. So, you know. They probably have Wiis there now. Yeah. Um, but uh, at my office compound down the road, we had a bunker, but it didn't close. What good is a bunker that doesn't close? This, this reminds me of the... Eddie Izzard um, routine about the bungalows. It's like, we've got a bunker everywhere. <laughs> we long for a nice bunker. Oh. Exactly. Tornado so, 
So it's something either really nice or something that doesn't even close. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm guessing you couldn't work from home. No. No. <laughs> no wireless. Out of the office working from the bunker. <laughs> um, so, I mean, did, were there a lot of uh, scares and things that you had to kind of go down to the bunker? And... Um, I spent one birthday in my bunker oh. um, for a little bit. It was great. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was a bar in karaoke. What more can you want on your birthday in a right. bunker? This was the bunker that no, didn't this was the, close. I'm guessing this was the bad It was bunker. the non-closing bunker. Never yeah. mind. You yeah. can want a lot more. Um, but, yeah, there was my birthday. And that was when um, a security guard supposedly um, put a Quran into the toilet in Guantanamo. And uh, people yeah. flipped out. Yeah. Rightfully so. I actually remember that. Yeah. So people flipped out from northern India all the way up into, like, all the stands, the Pakistan, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, uh -huh. and uh -huh. it just ripped like wildfire. And, um, you know, it was my birthday, and I was, like, really excited, but then, like, got this kind of stomach ache, and I'm like, there must be something wrong, because I'm not feeling good on my birthday, that doesn't make sense. And somebody's like, yeah, they're burning down Afghanistan. So, like, people were rioting, and we had to get in the bunker. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, so that was one kind of annoying thing that slowed down my, my social life. Um, but I'm still trying to figure out what good a bunker is if it doesn't close. It's going to trouble me. I mean, this is going to like trouble me for years. It troubled me <laughs> when I was there, especially. Um, but you know, you just get used to it. Yeah. And, uh, it's like the crooked painting to me though. I'm like, a bunker that doesn't close. <laughs> Damn. So, but the other scares, um, uh, there are a couple bombings that I heard in the city um, where I lived. There was, like, the city, and then you had to drive, like, 10 miles out um, mm -hmm. to where I worked. And um, I heard one bomb go off, and it wasn't too close to my house, but about, about a mile away. And, like, the doors kind of shook in my house. I'm like, that's really weird. And, you know, heard the bomb. Mm -hmm. um, but it was funny because where I worked um, was very close to the NATO forces and they were detonating bombs all the time that they found in landmines. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, like, I'd hear a bomb and I'm like, oh, it's just NATO, whatever. Mm -hmm. So we'd get really used to it. Really desensitizes you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, total PTSD, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like having a train in your backyard, but it explodes and scares the shit out it's of you. It's nothing like that. No, but it explodes yeah. and scares the shit out of you. Right. Yeah. I was showing how unlike that it was. Right. I was being snarky. Exactly. <laughs> you were being sleepy. fascinated by bombs going off all the time. So, um, you know, luckily, it takes a special type of person to work in that environment. Mm -hmm. And most of my crew, you know, we had about a core crew of about 100 people that were all really cool mm -hmm. um, Westerners with really good sense of humor and, like, open minds. So we worked through it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, those, those sounds got to be pretty normal though. So, you know, in the beginning I was like, oh my God, Bob. And everybody's like, ah, ha, ha. <laughs> we worked in Kosovo and Timor, like in Iraq, don't worry about it, honey. And then, um, at the end, at the end of my two year journey there, there was a, a suicide bomber that like hit the front of my office. And then I was like, huh? Yeah. That's, that's kind of annoying. The so, front of your office. Yeah. So like. Every office in Afghanistan, you'll find this in war torn countries. Um, it's like a compound, like these high walls, and then inside you have all these buildings. Mm -hmm. So a suicide bomber like hit the front of the the compound, um, and yeah, that was it for me. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, people died. It's like okay, it's it's time, time to move on. on. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it was just a that that was your moment of of uh, clarity. Yeah. Yeah, like, okay, I've done this for two years. Do I need to do more? Mm -hmm. No. And and um, I'm very fortunate because I have the money and the resources to get out. But yeah. there are all these Afghans who have been there for years, like, their whole lives, and they can't leave. And they have stuff like this happen all the time. So I'm pretty lucky. And to me, like, that moment when I look at the Afghans, it doesn't feel that traumatic to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. Is Was there some, like, any sort of feeling of accomplishment or anything when you left? Or is it just kind of a 
kind of a moment in time? Um, I can say that I feel accomplished because I didn't go insane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and and I, I felt accomplished because I was able to work in this very professional environment. And um, I held it fine. I was very mm -hmm. young at the time and I wasn't legally or not legally, but technically allowed to work for the UN because I was underage. Um, their age minimum is 25 and I was 23. Hmm. Um, and I knocked at the door and I wouldn't stop. And I said, you have to let me in. I have skills that you need. So mm -hmm. they finally let me in. And that felt like an accomplishment for me because a lot of people, not in Kabul, but in UN headquarters were pissed off that an underage person was working for them. So. And that was just by virtue of the fact that I'm here. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, I have these skills. So. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's a great way to get hired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm very. Knock, knock, knock. Land shark. <laughs> Candy delivery. I have skills that you need. Share me, please. <laughs> Twitter. Oh. <laughs> I know how to use Twitter. So then you came back to Portland. Yeah. Did you come back to Portland from there? I did. Came back to Portland. Um, slept a lot, um, <laughs> uh, stayed for several months. And then, like I told you guys in the tech edition, mm -hmm. I went off to Cambodia. Mm -hmm. Um, and before I left a week before, um, this guy named Sam Grover emailed me and he's like, Oh, where are you these days? I'm like, Oh, I'm in Portland. And you know, I, I just, I didn't necessarily want to meet up with you. Sorry, but I was really tired. And, you know, it's like everybody wanted to meet up with me because they kind of knew I was back. But I just had this instinct that I should go meet up with him. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing I did. Um, <laughs> so I met up, met up with Sam and had a really great time and I ran off to Cambodia. Nice. <laughs> and Sam, you stayed here? Yeah. Yeah. I've been here for many years. <laughs> I don't know people here or whatever. There's a mic. There's a mic behind you if you want to grab it. Oh, yeah. Actually, even have a remote camera. We, we have Sam Grover, who is at Sam Grover on Twitter. Although Twitter won't let me follow him because okay. apparently I've exceeded some sort of faux limit. I'm not bitter. Nothing. So, Sam, you stayed here? Yeah, I mean, I was, uh, I was at school at BSU, so, yeah, I was here. Do you have the traveling bug like Liz? I... Not like Liz, but uh, somewhat, yeah, I do, and mm -hmm. uh, I have been enjoying. Since we've been together, we've traveled a few places here in the U.S. and outside. And it's been fun. I'm looking for, yeah, and we have plans to do more. So very cool. Mm -hmm. So now I have a question for you because it's not often on Strange Love Live that we have another guest with a visible tattoo. So I have to ask about your collarbone tattoo. Okay, so here's the full-on tattoo. It's not very big, but it was painful. Yeah, because anything that's bony. People, anything that's bony hurts. Yeah. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I got this in Sacramento, mm -hmm. um, back when, um, I thought I was free mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, left home, left the East coast and I thought I gotta get a tattoo. So, um, I lived in Lake Tahoe at the time, mm -hmm. went down to Sacramento in a snowstorm, and I didn't know what I wanted, but I knew I wanted on my collarbone because I wanted a place that was different. So I went into the shop, and I'm like, well, my family's Irish, so I might as well get, like, an Irish design. Um, and then I saw a design that was Irish, and I'm like, okay, put it here. It mm -hmm. took, like, 45 minutes, thank God. Probably not as long as yours, but... <laughs> Mine took a little longer, yeah. <laughs> it was painful, though, but you know what? I'm still really happy to have it. Like, yeah. I don't even feel like I have a tattoo. It's just a part of me. I think know? that's what happens after a certain period of time. Yeah, people meet me, and they're, you have tattoos, and I'm like, yeah, I do. And it's not even snarky. It's like, oh, yeah, you're right. I forgot about that for a couple minutes. Um, so is that the only tattoo that you have? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How old were you when you got it? Um, I think I was 19. 19. That's how old, I think that's how old I was. Yeah. That's how old I was when I got my first tattoo. Mm hmm Yeah. Cool. Where'd so, you get yours? Um, where, 
Did I get it or where? Oh, oh. <laughs> the, answer, the default answer is which, in the butt. <laughs> uh, which city? Did... In Portland. Oh, okay. All of my tattoos I've gotten in Portland. Nice. Most of my tattoos I've gotten from the same tattoo artist. Oh, okay. But my first tattoo was not from the same tattoo artist as my... Yeah. I've only ever had two people tattoo me. The first three were from one person. The rest of them were from another person. Mm. So, And on my leg was the other. Where is it located? Yeah. And Dr. Norman, where is your tattoo located? Uh, it's on Twitter. Um, <laughs> actually, this is a good time to mention. I'm just going to throw this in here really quick. Is that uh, the uh, hopefully it shows up. I think somebody got a um, um, seriously, seriously. You're asking me where I got my tattoo. Uh, <laughs> um, a lot of people. One of the first things that people ask because seriously, we beat. Um, Jimmy Fallon and Google Voice uh, two nights ago on the uh, Twitter stats. We so, can talk uh, about seriously in a so moment. Seriously. I'm going to say that seriously, people no tend to ask me, they don't care, even care about my tattoos. They tend to ask me, does Dr. Normal have a lot of tattoos? And I always laugh really hard because this is, this is the secret. It's not even a secret. We don't care if you know. I have way too many tattoos and I will get more. Dr. Normal virgin skin no tattoos no piercings he's all clean it's because i'm a virgin yeah well he i think he had a hole in, in one of his ears but it's closed. seriously but seriously, he I'm had more virgin. than his ha fair share of hairspray when he was in a butt rock band so i think that more than, and spandex and lip gloss again seriously <laughs> <laughs> that's not even a joke i wish i was joking and people go oh wasn't he cute and i say no he's He's much older than I am. I do not find that fashion statement attractive. His hair was ignitable, for well, Christ's sake. Yeah, that was back in the day. That's what ignite was. Um, yes, yeah. Back one of in these day. days, when we get all the technical hurdles worked out here, I can. I I'll say be that, able to like throw that wait, wait. video in the mix. There right? is one attractive thing that you did, and it. And I have to ignore the the way that you looked when you did it. But he's a drummer. Pants on or pants off pants on okay oh my gosh that picture so anyway no <laughs> i'm he... sorry i don't have that in the iphone <laughs> that's good let's not have that one in the iphone um no but your little drumstick flipping thing that but i you do did have on that code one pink video. by the way if i mentioned that yes yeah no yeah, I, I mean just... that's what we I, I found your drum stick flipping impressive okay i'm not sure how we got on this topic but, i'm not uh... either but you had a lot of hair and and lip gloss and shredded spandex. Well, guys just have to be guys, don't they? I was going somewhere with this. Doctor Normal has no tattoos. I think I think uh, what you were actually thinking of was uh, drink time. <gasps> that sounds good. Yeah, I think that's what because we're. I, th I think we've been missing drink time. Yeah, ever since we had Clay play the uh, live drink music, I haven't wanted to hear this canned drink music. So Tonight, Cammy Chaos is drinking a Dirty Dry Bombay Martini. And I'm thinking Cammy Chaos should have had a double shot of espresso. Espresso. Cammy they... Chaos has been up since very early. Yeah. And has a long weekend ahead of her. Liz Grover has been drinking, I can't say it in Italian like Ryan can. That's right. Vino Maggio. Chianti Classico. We're having the Chianti from 2003. last week. Dr. Normal is drinking Spanish Cava. Oh. oh, I can't do the cam on me. Yes, Spanish Cava. And Sam Grover's beer is probably long since empty. What, what did you have there? Yeah, I've been having a bit more half a life. Oh, yes. Yeah, the, the classic Northwest uh, tradition, right? Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. Boy. Did I mention it's been a long week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, we have a show to do, and uh, that's... Can I mention do. that children's talent shows make me sleepy? <laughs> <laughs> it's good to not schedule those things. Uh, oh, oh, Friday. trust me, trust me. I did not schedule the talent show. That was not my decision-making process. So do you think you're uh, any more <laughs> Ignite presentations uh, in your future? I have a proposal. And, oh, uh, did you submit it for the Ignite 6? Yeah. Oh, wow. What is it? It's uh, 
Dare to Do and Ignite presentation. <laughs> there we go. And why it's so cool to do an Ignite presentation and, and how you can make it work for you. So, Dr. Normal, are you going to have a, a submittal, a proposal, if you will? No. You're not gonna print. You're not gonna submit for IP six. Mm, no. Sam. Um. No, I have no proposals. No. <laughs> do you have any desire to do an ignite presentation? Um. At some point, maybe I will. Um. I have kind of been. Uh. I have two main passions. One is photography. One is programming. Mm -hmm. And I've kind of been neglecting photography for a while. I've had some ideas uh, related to that uh, mm -hmm. to do at ignite, but maybe someday. My answer is, if you can find another 10 extra hours in the day, I'll submit an Ignite proposal. <laughs> what if your wife wrote an Ignite presentation for you? No. Because <laughs> I had a really I have, good one I have, for you. I have Ignite proposals. I had a good one, and it in involved you wearing a hat and underwear on stage. A tribute to the village <laughs> people? <laughs> what? I don't Hey, I don't recall any of the village people wearing that hat. I... Oh, that hat. I was thinking cowboy hat and underwear. I don't know. No, I was thinking that nice hat that we have in all the photos. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I just... Yeah. Village people popped in my head, so... <laughs> Can we sing the YMCA song? No, Or is we that cannot. copyright protected? It is. That's sad. <laughs> I know all the arm movements to that song. Is this the music that you grew up with, Liz? <laughs> YMCA? <laughs> Not so much. I, you know, Sugar Hill Gang... All the way, Run really? DMC. Yeah. Run DMC. Oh, the, Run DMC. The real, yeah, that, I, I can get behind that. I, I, I don't know where that whole hip-hop rap thing went, what did but you I grow liked up? Run, Run DMC. What did you grow up with, Dr. Norman? What did you listen to? Uh, we don't. We know this. We don't have to get into all this What nonsense. did your parents make you listen to when you were really little? Mahavishnu Orchestra. Your no, parents they did, did not, not make, make me you listen, listen to, to that's Mahavishnu. That's what I... In my formative years, grew up listening to like Mahavishnu Orchestra and Miles Davis. Like when you were five, Herbie what Hancock. did your preschool teacher and your kindergarten teacher make you listen to? Jesus loves me. Okay? Really? Oh God! Yeah. In yeah. school, I, it was a Christian school. Oh. What, do you, what do you expect? I had wow. a daycare provider that made us sing that song every yeah. day. That song gives me. It was nightmares. catchy. It was catchy. It still gets stuck in my head from time to time. It's, and like, then I uh, it's catchy like in. Happy Birthday is. I think. Is anyone's birthday today? I don't know. No. What? I'm sure someone says I'm just I don't okay. last week we... <laughs> that's very profound Cami Chaos I'm sure someone's birthday is today in the world of 8 billion people somewhere somewhere yeah, you might be yeah. mocking me I am mocking you at this point yes well, it is my cousin's birthday today. there you go see whose uh, birthday a cousin of mine has a birthday today Happy birthday, Sam's cousin. <laughs> Who would have thought? I just wanted to say happy birthday to somebody. Amazing. I got to say happy birthday to one of my friends last week, but this week I had no one to say happy birthday to. Well, and, you know, we got the little yellow house there. Because we're not Southwest. at South by Southwest. Yeah. I hear I'm there's... glad we're not. Really? Yeah. It'd be a hassle. You know, there's a part of me I'm that's grumpy. really, really glad that we're not because there's way too much crap going on right now. Exactly. But then there's this other part of me that's like, everybody You don't like that. crowds. I know. What is that all about? I don't like crowds. I don't like people. So why would you want to go there? <laughs> I don't like talking to people. I don't like when people shake my hand. Right. Really, I don't like people. I'm not a people person. You don't like crowds. I really don't there's like crowds. There's a lot of crowds at South so by what, Southwest. So why on earth? Which is also incidentally why I have issues traveling because there was always people anywhere you go. So anyway, why on earth would I want to go to South by Southwest? But I do. There's this little. I'm like, but I. It's just envy. It is and barbecue. No, no, envy and barbecue. Barbecue envy. Okay, envy and barbecue. That's it. That's the only reason. You know, it's just that's that's all you care about. All the cool. That's all you care about. Envy and barbecue. <laughs> Cami Chaos's book that she's working on is going to be called Envy, Envy and, and Barbecue. barbecue. <laughs> the story of Cami Chaos. That's catchy. Mm, yeah. Barbecue. Funny, it'll be like, God, Liz Grover's book, that FK. I'm not sure what it is, but it's called Envy and Barbecue. I'm not sure. Actually, you know, it's funny. <laughs> I, I've been working on a title today because my agent's like, you have to change your title. Like, oh, okay. really? So maybe, maybe that's it. What was your title? Uh, my title was Dare to Go. Mm -hmm. um, uh, from the mountains of Afghanistan to the red carpets of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. But my agent said that Dare to Go is 
is, you know, Dare 2 is used a lot, so you got to think of something else. So Something original. Um, yeah, and I've been brewing, and I'm not, like, I love writing, but when I think about giving somebody a name or a title, I'm like, Ugh. It's no kidding. A lot of responsibility. Yeah. So there are some things that I I bad at titling things, and I'm super, super, super bad at writing a bio. Yeah, that's hard. I can't define myself, and it's not like a oh I can't define myself. It's like um I have no clue. I'm sorry. It's yeah. So so so, so the dare to go branding. I mean that's a strong branding there. It's like. It is, and I've been doing it since I started the presentation, but, you know, yeah. time to change, so whatever. Well, it's less than a year. You can make up less than a year. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, mean, I can have a talk with your agent. I mean, like, you know, <laughs> coffee mugs, uh, branded sunglasses, the, you know, the, you know, the, the, you know. Do you have coffee mugs? The wrist, <laughs> the yellow wristbands, you know. Oh, my God. <laughs> So what's the the Hollywood uh, red carpet? Well, um, and and that's that's an interesting question. I didn't like. Step... Yeah, since you brought it up in the title, <laughs> it's like oh. The, I didn't physically step on a red carpet, um, but I was doing fundraising in the Hollywood Circle. Mm -hmm. um, definitely going to the houses of oh yeah. stars and directors and blah blah blah. Um, so I guess that's where the red carpet came in. And, you know, like I said, I'm trying to find a title, and I don't know if that's going to carry over. But yeah, yeah, I did fundraising in Hollywood. Really? Yeah. I mean, is, is that which involves um, talking to people? Yeah, <laughs> and shaking their hand See, and being in crowds. And that's the thing. Like, it's funny because I do travel, but I don't really like people and i mm -hmm. actually would like to see world peace mm -hmm. but i still don't like hanging out with people too much you see <laughs> maybe i i honestly think it's the people who don't like to be around other people as much that the peace is more important to because you get that please everyone be happy and leave me alone yeah i'm trying to work here could you yeah. guys keep it down <laughs> uh, it's so. quiet time for the world now no more bombing no more blowing things up we're yeah. having quiet time everyone get their blankets so what, um, I mean, can you say who you visited or talked to or? Um, <laughs> well, I, um, the reason why I left Cambodia, mm -hmm. and, and this is in the book, I went straight from Cambodia to L.A. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, you know, you're in Cambodia and you're in the land of Angelina Jolie, pretty much. She owns <laughs> half the country. Um, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> you know, of course you're there and you're like working humanitarian aid and you're like, wouldn't it be funny if like, I ran into her or something? I'm like, And I, I thought to myself, I'm like, wouldn't it be just ironic if I ended up in L.A. like doing a fundraiser mm -hmm. at an event? And um, Well, are, or are people like coming up to you in Cambodia going, oh, do you know Angelina <laughs> Um, You're an American. Do you know Angelina Jolie? Yeah. No, but a Cambodian came up to me and said that her son was like Angelina's Cambodian bodyguard for a little bit. So, um, and of course, I've heard the stories about her going to Afghanistan too. Mm -hmm. So we we kind of like always, you know, go to these similar places. But I haven't met her yet. Um, but yeah, it was funny because. What happened was I ran into a silk studio, silk weaving studio that employed uh, women landmine survivors. So a lot of them has had like prosthetic limbs, mm -hmm. but it was mm -hmm. totally like fair trade studio, like eight hour days, um, you know, open air building. Mm -hmm. You could see the rainforest um, from inside the building. Like they didn't really have walls. It was just like posts and a roof because, you know, you can do that in the jungle. Um, and one of my big concerns is, is fair trade because I've seen way too many sweatshops and, mm -hmm. and kids who work at them. So um, anyway, I'm like, wow, this silk is amazing. Like usually when you go around Asia, you buy um, silk that's cheap, but it falls apart right away. And I'm like, God, like when I go home, like my ticket goes to L.A. Like I could stop in L.A. and show this silk to like the stores in Venice Beach. You know, mm -hmm. that would be pretty easy, right? So... Like, I go and I meet the woman who started the silk weaving studio. She's an American, and she's well-known in the, the weaving circles of the world. She's been featured in big museums and all that. And, and you know, it, weaving in Cambodia is really important because 
um, because of the genocide with the Khmer Rouge, like they lost their culture and they mm -hmm. lost weaving. And she went in there and helped to teach them the, the skill that they lost again. So anyway, I'm talking to her in the capital, uh, Phnom Penh. And I'm like, you know, what are you doing? Are you marketing in the U.S.? She's like, well, no, not really. Like, I, I'm just, you know, I'm in Barney's and um, in New York. And then I'm at this one boutique in L.A. And <clears throat> I said, okay, go on. <laughs> um, and I, I told her my idea about stopping in L.A. for a day because I was going through there anyway on my mm -hmm. way back to Portland. And um, she said, well, yeah, this friend who owns the boutique She's married to a very well-known, um, like, corporate executive of one of the biggest film studios in Hollywood. And because of my book and the theory that I have in my philosophy, I can't tell you who it is because I really don't like name dropping. Um, and this is a pretty well-known name. But, um, you know, I said, well, dear God, like, what are you doing? <laughs> this person, you know, your friend is married to this guy who probably knows a lot of well-known actors and, um, you could be doing a fundraiser and I'm like, I don't know how Hollywood works. Like, but I'm guessing they have a lot of money to throw around and I'm guessing there are a lot of fundraisers. So I said, listen, and you know, I had nothing in my life at this point. I had no like future jobs after Cambodia that I was committed to. Um, I said, well, I will go to LA for you and I will go for a day but if you talk to your friend and if you get her to invite people <laughs> who mm -hmm. work for her husband then we'll we'll figure out a way to throw a fundraiser like I'm totally committed to it let's go so she got back to me the next day and she's like yeah my, my friend's totally cool like she'll invite all the stars that she has connections with and um I said okay well I'm going to LA so I, I turned around and and went to LA and uh, within two months I did this fundraiser and it's funny because I thought I would have to go to LA and scramble for a venue mm -hmm. for the fundraiser but when I got there um, and I talked to the woman who owned the boutique um, she said well you know we're gonna let you do it at our house yeah <laughs> in Bel Air okay cool I don't have to pay for a venue so so that's that's the whole LA red carpet stuff and then after that I was doing fundraising um, for the peace movement there a lot of money for the peace movement comes out of Hollywood so so you get to kind of hobnob with some people some folks definitely and some of the ones I'll mention like Marissa Tomei um, well, Jane Fonda and I, I like mentioning Jane Fonda because she's just cool mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and and uh, you know She's had a lot of mud uh, slung at her in the past that I don't think she deserved. Mm -hmm. um, but she's um, definitely coming back into the peace movement and being more vocal after a long time of being silent. So seems like we didn't learn after that first period too well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, from L.A. to Portland and That's now right. to Austin, we have to say goodnight. That's right. Um, it's getting late here, mm -hmm. and it's time for After Hours to go back to Twitter. Mm -hmm. But we have a special song to say goodnight to all of you tonight. <laughs> so first, let's say goodnight to Liz Grover and Good to night, Sam Liz. Grover and Thanks, to Sam. all of you. And then we have a song uh, called Everybody Wants to Be a Texan. Dr. Normal <laughs> came up with this years ago. I hope that you all appreciate it's this. It's on the MySpace page. There Everybody right. have fun at South by Southwest. And everyone not at South by Southwest have fun. Join us next week for a uh, redone repeat with Marshall Kirkpatrick. Have a great night, everyone. Good night.
Thanks. Thanks.